So the competition for Nottingham graduate entry medicine is fierce. Around 1,000 people apply. They invite 420 or so people to the interview and then they give around 160 places out. The purpose of this video is to try and help you get one of those places. What are you telling me? My name is Marius and today we are back down the end of the garden in the studio that my father and my dear old brother built with their own two hands. And today we're gonna to talk about Nottingham Graduate Entry Medicine. So firstly, just a bit of background on the course. Nottingham do the exact same thing as Southampton. They do two years of a bespoke program and then they put you back in in the normal fourth year of undergraduate medicine. So then you do fourth and fifth year with the undergrads and then that is your medical degree. You're finished, you're a doctor. So my understanding is that they pretty much do exactly the same as Southampton. You have 18 months to learn the science. So that will take you from September of first year to January of second year. You kind of go through all the bodily systems, um, learning all the medical science that underpins the practice of medicine. And then you have a big exam in January and then they probably send you off on placement like they did to us for the rest of year two. So how do they actually teach the course? Well, Nottingham actually do the exact same thing as Southampton once again. I think it is small group learning and it is case-led learning. So different medical schools teach different ways. So some do didactic teaching where everyone gets together in a lecture theater and they just deliver you the content um, up front. However, places like Southampton and I think Nottingham do this small group case-led learning where you get a scenario at the start of the week and that will kind of prime uh, the week's learning and you'll kind of learn all the relevant stuff around that case. The idea is that it's more clinically focused and it just feels more relevant. At Southampton we call these cases trigger material so they are supposed to trigger your interest and your learning and then you go away in the week, you have a bunch of lectures, you do your own study and then towards the end of the week um, you have a fuller picture of a lot of different aspects of medicine within that case. So you might have a case which would be introduced like, so here is a 35 year old accountant, uh, Mr. Darcy. He is presented with some blurred vision in his right eye. Um, here's his CT scans. It shows some hyperdensity of the uh, optic nerve. And you know, here's his blood results, etc., etc. Here's, here's all the investigations. Um, and you work through the case from start, from that presentation all the way to the end, to the diagnosis, um, including the prognosis and everything like that. So instead of them teaching you, you know, cardiovascular medicine, um, respiratory medicine, neurology, etc., etc., Southampton and probably Nottingham, if they're doing it in a case-led way, they will teach you about neurology and the relevant neuroanatomy, but around someone that is presenting with a neurological condition like multiple sclerosis. And I personally think this is a really good way to learn. I really enjoyed this way of learning at Southampton. So I think this is something to be excited about, about Nottingham Graduate Medicine, and it's something to ham up in the interview if they ask you, why do you want to go to Nottingham Graduate Medicine? All right, so the second thing we need to talk about is the undergraduate degree requirements for Nottingham Graduate Entry Medicine. Do they like people with a certain class of degree or, or a certain type of degree like biomedical sciences or something like that? So on their website it says that you can have any single type of undergraduate degree. It doesn't have to contain lots of biomedical science for example. It can be anything. And it also says that you only need a 2-2, a Desmond 2-2, uh, in order to apply for Nottingham Graduate Medicine. But what exactly do the freedom of information requests reveal about whether this is true or not? All right, so here's a little table that I pulled off a freedom of information request, and it shows the characteristics, the classes of the degrees of people that applied um, and got interviews to Nottingham Graduate Entry Medicine. It shows a real mixture of classes of degrees. So some people got thirds, some uh, you know lower second class, so two twos, some got two ones, you know the majority of people got two ones and a substantial portion of those people um, who got interviews got firsts as well. So basically this is a good one to apply to if you have got a two two in your undergraduate degree. 
a lot of graduate entry medical schools ask for a 2-1. However, Nottingham are not going to penalise you if you get a 2-2. And yeah, just to reiterate, I think you can have any single degree on this planet to apply to Nottingham Graduate Entry Medicine. If you've done a humanities degree, a biomedical science degree, anything on this planet, you can apply to Nottingham Graduate Medicine. Alright, so if you have achieved at least a 2-2 in any undergraduate degree and you're seriously considering applying for Nottingham Graduate Medicine, then you're gonna to wanna to try and get some work experience in. So if Nottingham like your application and that is based on uh, your undergraduate degree and also your GAMSAT, which I'm gonna come on to in a minute, then they'll probably send you this work experience questionnaire to fill in before your interview. And this is a sly little extra bit of the application process that Nottingham do that probably catches a few people out. Clearly, like Warwick Graduate Medicine, Nottingham also like their applicants to have a little bit of work experience in a health-related field to show that you're jumping through some hoops and you're keen for this life as a doctor. All right, so briefly the way I got my work experience was I reached out to a few different people and ended up getting some shadowing experience on urology, so urological surgery and immunology and I did a bit of A&E as well. I also got a job on the bank as a healthcare assistant at a psychiatric hospital. You know, I am aware that obviously it's more difficult to get work experience in these COVID times. I'm not exactly sure what Nottingham are doing about that, but I know that Southampton are being a lot more lenient with work experience. As long as you have, you know, reflected on your life experiences and can show that you understand what it takes to be a doctor uh, and how your experiences, for example, I don't know, working in a pub, um, you know, are slightly relevant to the skills and the traits of, of a doctor, then, you know, Southampton don't even mind that much. The reason I think this catches people out is, you know, I saw this Freedom of Information request from 2017, and it shows that the number of applicants that received the work experience questionnaire was at 472. So 472 people, clearly they were considering strongly inviting these people to interview. Only 439 people were invited to interview after the work experience questionnaire so the other people just didn't have enough work experience uh, in the bank to get themselves to interview all right so if you've got a 2-2 in any subject in your undergraduate degree and you have a little bit of work experience and you've reflected on that work experience then you're going to want to start considering taking the gamsat i took this from the website firstly it says they calculate the average score for the GAMSAT in a slightly different way to normal. They just add up your scores for the three sections and divide it by three. Furthermore, if I can just draw your attention to this bottom section, the selection for interview section, it says to be considered for interview, you must achieve a minimum score of 55 in section two, 55 in either section one or three, and 50 in the remaining section. Oh yes, this is a very useful sheet actually. This confirms what I was trying to say before. So it says that your applications for 2022 entry won't be affected if you haven't got as much work experience um, as you planned, but they are looking to see that you've had life experience. They want you to think about your life experiences and reflect on them and reframe them so that they fit in with the characteristics of a doctor or the characteristics you think are important to have as a doctor. So those are things like teamwork, leadership, good communication skills, compassion, etc, etc. Alright, so if you have achieved over the cutoff in the GAMSAT, you have got yourself a 2-2 in your undergraduate degree, and not worrying too much about the work experience in the 2022 application cycle, then you'll probably be invited to an interview. So normally Nottingham Graduate Medicine is a multiple mini interview, so the same as Kings and Warwick, and also Newcastle, and in this you'll be in a room that's been cordoned off into different sections, and these are the so-called stations of the multiple mini interview, and essentially each station is designed to assess a different characteristic that they would want to see in their medical students at Nottingham. So this is the normal setup however I think last year due to Covid they did a kind of 40 minute online panel interview so basically you're chilling on zoom in your smart shirt and your pajamas and slippers and you're sitting virtually across from two of the selectors who are just going to be assessing you in kind of a uh, question answer type format. I think probably there's a good chance this year that it will be online as well. I know Southampton are holding their interviews online this year. However, I think on the website it says it could be face to face or it could be online and only time will tell. So you'll have to let me know in the comments um, whether it was online or in person. All right, so this is what it basically says on their website in terms of the interview. So the interview is designed to assess the personal qualities usually considered important for the practice of medicine. 
you'll be expected to have good communication and listening skills, an understanding of professional issues such as teamwork. I don't know what professional, why teamwork is a professional issue, you know what I'm saying? Respect for patients and the contribution of those working in professions allied to medicine. All right, so essentially this confirms to me um, a similar approach to Southampton do where once you get into the interview, they're not really looking at you academically. They're trying to assess those non-academic criteria. They're trying to see what kind of person you are and whether you'd be suited to studying medicine at Nottingham. So for example, Nottingham might get you to do a little task with uh, an actor. I'm not sure how relevant this will be to this year's interview if it is held online. However, just for the sake of it, you know, they might get you to construct something with an actor, you know, and the actor's deliberately fluffing it up all the time, and you're supposed to be patient and be able to communicate with them um, in, a, in a nice and patient way, uh, you know, getting the best out of the scenario and not getting stressed out too much. So yeah, sit with an open body language, you know, be engaged in the task, potentially you know try and use their name learn their name at the start of that section and say you know Michael I think you know what we need to do next is blah 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 you know I think that can come across quite charming and yeah just try to stay calm and interact in, in a productive way to get the task done obviously that is quite a good station to assess both your communication and listening skills and your ability to work in a team in terms of respect for patients and the contribution of those working in professions allied to medicine you need to understand that nurses um, occupational therapists uh, phlebotomists all of the people that work in the hospital but aren't doctors are literally so important to the running of the hospital you know the place would literally fall apart without them they do so much good work you need to show that you have that level of respect you understand how important the other roles are to the hospital and you can get that across to them all right so in terms of other things that it might be worth preparing for in the run-up to your nottingham interview so there might be an ethical station so yeah a classic one that various medical schools like to use and i'm sure you came across it in your medify sjt preparation is you know your mate is cheating on a test and you catch him uh, you're a medical student at the time so what do you do i guess i would say that clearly this is against the code of conduct for prospective doctors or doctors in training. We are, as doctors in training, supposed to be open and honest and act with integrity and probity. Essentially, it just means that your actions are kind of guided by a strong set of moral principles. So clearly, someone that has a lot of probity wouldn't be tempted to cheat. So obviously, you found out and it's probably your duty to have a word. However, I don't think they want some absolutely callous human being who has found out and is just gonna come straight, wrap them out to the GMC so they get kicked out of medical school I think this is a good opportunity to show that you have some compassion you know maybe you check if he was alright if he's having issues at home or in his relationships or something uh, try and get to the bottom of you know the reasons why he's been forced to cheat um, and potentially hasn't got himself up to the standard for that particular test the next thing it is definitely worth doing is working out your answers to the questions why do you want to go to Nottingham graduate medical school and why do you even want to study medicine so obviously don't tell them the real reason you want to do medicine for four years which is to get your prefix changed to a doctor come up with a spiel that is personal to you and that is going to convince them that you are an individual who has actually reflected on why you want to go down this path. For me, I'd probably say something like, yeah, I never really wanted to do medicine uh, at a young age. I didn't want to be a doctor going to my undergraduate degree. I went to do engineering. However, I, once I changed to biomed, I became very interested in the science of it. And this kind of piqued my interest in medicine. So I got some experience in the clinics, uh, got some experience in surgery and was absolutely gassed. So I had to come and apply for this medical school. In terms of why do you want to go to Nottingham Graduate Medical School, you want to talk about how the course is structured and how the course is taught. I've already told you that it's a case-led uh, teaching style at Nottingham. So they give you a case at the start of the week and you work in small groups with your colleagues. And I think I've done this at Southampton and I think this is a really good way to learn medicine. You firstly want to let them know that you're aware of this. You're aware of actually how they teach the course. And secondly, you want to let them know why you are particularly suited to that type of learning style. The other thing it'd be good to look at is research. So look up a couple of bits of research that certain academics at the University of Nottingham are carrying out within the Faculty of Medicine that just shows that you are vaguely interested in the university as a whole and maybe who knows you'll be interviewed by the person whose paper you've read and you can tell them how much you loved it the next question you might want to prepare for is what skill do you take most pride in 
and why would that actually help you in medicine? It's probably tempting to say something like, you just love drawing out the bones of the human body on the weekends instead of going out with your mates. But yeah, it's probably just worth having a little think about this yourself. For me, I'd probably say something like, my biggest skill is to be willing to be bad at something. You know, I am completely comfortable in the ugly zone as Dave Aldred, MBE calls it in his book, The Pressure Principle, being in that place where you're crap at a skill and you can just work at it hard and see yourself improving over time. And then I'd say the reason this applies to medicine is because blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of different skills to pick up, both manual skills like suturing, but also things like taking a history, so communication skills. I appreciate that we start off being rubbish at that and we can just improve over time and by the end of our medical degree if we work hard enough on our skills then we can get really good at anything the next thing I think it would be worth doing is reading over your personal statement so Southampton does a panel style interview and this is a very important tip because they have your personal statement in front of them um, the selectors will have read your personal statement just before the interview and they'll probably be thinking what questions can I ask this applicant um, and what can I get this applicant to talk about that they've written you want to make sure that you can back everything you've written down up with stories and explanations so that is basically it for Nottingham Graduate Medicine. As a quick recap, so get a Desmond 2-2 at least. Get some work experience, however, in 2021 or 2022, I don't think that is going to matter too much. Bang the gamsa, I've given you the cutoffs before. However, probably if you're getting around 56, you're going to be quite safe. Uh, I know someone that got an offer with a gamsa of 56 average. You know, after that, get onto your Microsoft Teams interview in your pyjamas and a smart shirt or something. Uh, remain cool as a cucumber, read your personal statement, make sure you do some practice with a friend or something, maybe watch my graduate medicine interview tips and then the offer is going to come. It looks like they send their earliest uh, offers out to um, people after interviews in March, so the 1st of March and the latest offer they sent out in 2019 was in July. I hope this was reasonably useful and best of luck for your Nottingham graduate entry medicine application if you are applying this year. Cheers.